Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Today's lecture will be on the topic number 3 which is uh, on steel as a construction material This is the part 1 of the uh, series of the lecture and the, this lecture will be presented by Hasbin Idayu Amaruddin Alright, for the learning outcomes at the end of this lecture, you should be able to, the first one is understand the stress-strain diagram of a steel. Then you need to understand the type and categories of the steel. You need to identify the properties of the steel and also explain the manufacturing process uh, of steel as construction material. Okay, as introduction, steel is basically composed about 90%, uh, 98% of iron with the main uh, alloying elements of carbon, silicon and manganese. Steel is a material that has wide application in civil engineering, uh, such as, as building, bridges, pipeline, water tank and also roof trusses. In Malaysia, many structures have started to use steel as the main material. Uh, steel is also strongest, uh, most resistant to aging and most generally the most reliable in quality all right steel is derived from two raw materials which is uh, liquid pig iron and scraps pig, pig iron is a raw iron that immediate products or smelting the iron iron ore with coal and limestone in a blast furnace Pig iron has very high carbon content, typically about 3.5%, which makes it very brittle, so we cannot use directly as a material. The iron making uh, blast furnace products produce a liquid pig iron from the iron, iron ore, limestone, coke and also air. The scrap used for new steel making arise in the steelworks, which is the readily characterized and also recycled. Uh, steel is actually in the industrialized material, which is uh, subject to tight control of its content and the detail of its forming and fabrication. Uh, it has additional desirable qualities of non combustible non rotting and dimensionally stable with time and moisture change. The usage of steel is basically for the strength of the steel and to resist impact, corrosion and steel to take the and hold a sharp edge and also cut other steel. Okay, so what are the main properties of the steel? Strong under compression and tension as compared to concrete and timber. Therefore, steel is actually a ductile material which is can resist excessive load due to wind, earthquake, vibration and impact. Uh, okay, so that is the main properties that we are looking on for the steel. So fa the factor uh, for selecting steel in construction, the first one is you need to check the strength level requirement. Then you need uh, to make sure the properties, the mecha prop mechanical properties uh, required. Uh, the process of the steel, steel making uh, due to heat treatment or other plant is available or not. And the code of practice. The reference codes, we have uh, Eurocode 3 BS, in, which is uh, specified on the uses of steelwork in building. In construction, uh, steel can be used as structure steel, which is a plate, bar, pipe, and structure sheet. And coral form steel, such as tart, truss, roofing, cladding, and also for fastening products, for example, boat, knife. Uh, and for concrete, we are using steel as reinforcement steel, rebar in concrete, and other form. Uh, so this is an example of steel structure. Here we have uh, coal foam cladding. Coal foam cladding is a basically uh, a form of to support the roof. 
roof tile and here the column and the beam is using hot roll steel all right uh, we can divide the structural steel into three categories the first one is the frame structure which is the steel member uh, consists of skeletal of framework which carry all the load uh, steel member are used to carry the vertical load when acting as beam and girder and also agile load when acting as strut ties or column the steel frame are made of load bearing element for example uh, we have in frame structure we have beam we have girder we have uh, trusses we have column and basically for beam and girder is to support uh, a dome dome is some kind of a uh, half upper half of a spira uh, to support roof tile so the other type of steel is a shell type structure which is carry agile stress load for example we use this one as to store water, to store liquid or storage beam. So the third uh, category is suspension type of structure which is uh, basically supporting agile tension and normally we are using uh, cable or wire and it is for suspension bridge. Okay, so next we move on into type of steel. Uh, there are several types of steel. The first one is carbon, carbon steel. Carbon steel can be divided into four, which is low carbon, mild carbon, medium carbon, and also high carbon steel. So it is actually depends on the level of carbon in the steel uh, component. For example, for low carbon, we have only 0.15% of carbon, which is uh, the, the steel is actually very soft and only so suitable for wire and tin sheet. So the other type is maybe mild carbon and also medium carbon. So normally for, for engineering purposes, we are using medium carbon steel. Oh, okay, so this is an example of carbon steel. And next is alloy steel. Alloy steel contains either silica, silicon or manganese or any other elements uh, with deliberate alloying addition. So we need to add some alloy into the carbon steel to enhance the properties of the steel. Uh, the, the third type of steel is weathering steel, which is contained of about 0.2% of copper, which is have better resistance against corrosion as compared to uh, carbon steel. And the fourth type is the stainless steel. For stainless steel, it contains chromium. Uh, and stainless steel can be classified into mutton, mutton steel, ferritic, or austenitic, uh, which is level depends on the level of chromium inside the uh, steel component. Alright, so steel behavior. Some of the properties of the steel make it versatile among construction material which is we have steel is high in stiffness high tensile strength and we can have the ability to form into various shape and also wildable uh, for ease of construction even small differences in the composition of the steel can have a dramatic effect on the properties of the steel itself uh, for steel we are going to use a tensile test to test the strength of the steel. Uh, based on the tensile test, what we got is the stress strain diagram of the steel. So basically, the steel have uh, three levels, which is the first part is uh, the phase of when elastic page, uh, which is when your when you apply load, the stress will be increased and also the strain. So you, here is the linear range and A value is the proportional limit at linear range and B value at point B is the uh, yield point or elastic point of the steel and when it start to change. Okay, so and 
at the C and D is at uh, the upper yield point and lower yield point of the steel. After that, the steel is become plastic. The second uh, stage of the steel is plastic. Even though uh, without increasing of the load, but the strain will be still increases until it reach a rupture point where the steel is uh, break or lost its strength. Okay, it means it, uh, at point E is actually the ultimate strength of the steel in plastic condition. Okay, so this is uh, the description of the stress strains so just now I've mentioned. Okay, in terms of the manufacturing process, uh, steel can be the first one is primary steel making, which is we are uh, used refers to refining process to produce liquid steel or melt. The aim is to produce a melt uh, for a required composition. The the typical range required for structural steels are carbon, manganese, sulfur, and phosphorus. For carbon, is about uh, zero point fifty to 0.25 percent the type of refining process can be basement or thomas process cement process basic oxygen process or electric arc steel making process okay the secondary uh, type of processing is secondary steel making which is the liquid steel process not finished when it is step from the furnace it must undergo further treatment so means the secondary process which is necessary to de deoxidize the metal. Uh, this is done by adding some manganese and silicon will react with dissolved oxygen to form insoluble particle of oxide. It may, may be necessary to adjust the, the content of carbon and manganese so that uh, it will reach the grade that required for the particular uh, steel. And the third process is mechanical forming, uh, used to continuously cast material into shape and size required. Uh, mechanical forming can be either hot rolling or cold rolling. For hot rolling, all the steel, uh, so basically uh, most of the steel in construction is hot roll, which is the steel are uh, heated to make, uh, to make them soft enough and then we deform in two shapes. Uh, for core rolling, uh, more, or in core rolling, we shape it, uh, the steel without heated the steel. So basically, a uh, modest reduction can be achieved by rolling the, the to give better size and quality. And basically, core rolling is mainly for lightweight session. Okay, so these are all the process of making steel. So from the uh, the substance value, and then you go into the blast furnace to form a hot metal, and lastly you get your main product. Depends on your rolling method. Okay, so that is all. For the first part of the lecture, I'm going to continue on the second part on uh, next video. Thank you very much.